Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am Dr. Mayur Kardile, Director of Pune Spine Institute. Today, if you're watching this video, chances are that you've already seen a spine surgeon and have been advised this minimally invasive knee lift procedure, or you're suffering from back pain or sciatica and you're exploring various treatment options for it. So yes, this is the right place for you. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into what exactly is T-Lift, what exactly it means and how this procedure is done and what are the conditions is used for. So before we move ahead, please do not forget to give a thumbs up to this video and to subscribe to our channel to get authentic and regular updates about your spine health. So before we get into the nitty gritties of MIST lift, let's get down to the basics. MIST lift stands for Minimally Invasive Surgery for Transforaminal Lumbar Interbody Fusion. So basically, this is a surgical process to stabilize the spine. This surgical technique has been used for quite a number of years now and has been delivering consistent results and making the lives of our patients much better. Now, let's break it down step by step. Basically, your spine is made out of multiple bones called vertebrae. And in between those vertebrae, there are intervertebral discs. These are cushion-like structures which also act like shock observers of your spine. And your spine is a phenomenal structure which protects the delicate nerves that go down to your arms and legs. Now, when the degenerative process starts setting into the spine, because of injury or just because of aging, the disc starts degenerating. And then that puts a lot of pressure over the facet joint and then that together causes something called as stenosis or even instability wherein there is abnormal movement in the spine and that creates a lot of pressure on the nerves in the spine and then you start getting back pain or pain going down into the legs. This entire symptom conglomeration is called sciatica. Typically, patients would be complaining of back pain and pain going down into the legs aggravated while walking. Now, when you see your spine doctor, they would evaluate you with various x-rays and MRIs and if they have found out that there's abnormal movement into your spine or if there is something called as foraminal stenosis, then there are chances that your doctor would be advising you this minimally invasive T-lift procedure. T-lift procedure is done under general anesthesia in which the patient is put on in prone position after sterile skin preparation the surgeon reaches the spine through fancy retractors called as tubes. This uh, surgery is done under microscope assistance to give us better visualization. And once you reach down the spine, the facet joints which connect the two vertebra are cut, the nerves are decompressed and the disc space is reached. Once you reach the disc space, the surgeon now clears out the disc space and pressions the end plate and puts in autologous bone graft into it. Also, a cage is inserted inside to maintain the disc space in between the two vertebrae. Now, once this is done, the surgeon will now put in percutaneous pedicle screws to stabilize everything and then the rods are connected to give it a solid construct. Once this is done, the retractors are removed. This entire procedure is done under microscopic visualization to give us better precision as well as under image intensifier guidance which tells us about where exactly the implants are going and put them into the optimum position. Now, once all this is done, the surgeon would remove out the retractors and close the wound with preferably subcutaneous sutures. Once this is done, the patient is wheeled out of the operation theater and down into the recovery. Once the patient comes back to his room, we would expect him to be resting for a while. And then later on in the same evening or maybe in the next morning, physiotherapist team would be coming in to make you sit up and make you stand and walk around. Now, in the next two or three days, as the patient becomes more comfortable walking around uh, and going to the washroom and doing his own activities, we would be ready to send the patient back home. Once you're back home, you're supposed to rest for a few days and then gradually your condition gets better. Noticeably, you may feel that the pre-existing leg pain that you had has reduced quite a lot. The back pain also has reduced quite a lot and then that sets you on a good path of recovery. Over time, the interbody graft that we had put in now fuses and stabilizes your spine very well and you get good pain relief. You are expected to do physical therapy after the surgery which also ensures faster recovery. So what are the conditions wherein T-lift would help you? T-lift is usually used for spondylolisthesis, lumbar canal stenosis with foraminal stenosis, at times even for spinal infections or as a part of corrective procedure for spinal deformities. And as much as this procedure is beneficial, it also comes with a little bit of risk factor which lies around 1% for each and every patient. So let us know what are the risk factors associated with T-lift. Yes, like any other surgical procedure, even the T-lift does carry its own risk factors. And those could include 
bleeding, infection, CSF leak, implant loosening, implant blackout. But if you really put in everything together, the chances of having any of these complications are really minuscule. So in general, this is a really safe technique to go through. So to recap, now we have learned about minimally invasive t lift when exactly this procedure is done, what are the conditions that the patient would benefit this from, and also how this procedure is done and what to expect in the post-operative recovery. So if you think this video would benefit you or your loved one, please do not forget to share this video with them. And for regular spine health related updates, do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel.